scientist, or more specifically, I'm a DIY neuroscientist. And uh, what that means is a neuroscientist obviously studies the brain. Um, if you know any neuroscientists, they went to graduate school for five to eight years toiling away in their PI's lab just to get access to the tools to be able to study the brain. Now that's a, a bit of a shame because 20% of the entire world, that's one out of five people, have a neurological disorder. And how many cures do we have? Zero. So it seems a bit odd that the only way that you can study the brain is to dedicate your life to that field, right? And it's not like that in other fields. For example, in astronomy, you don't have to get a PhD in astrophysics to get access to a telescope. You can buy a cheap one at Walmart and set it up and maybe start uh, to learn about the heavens, become interested in becoming a scientist, or make discoveries. The hale bopp comet was discovered by an amateur. Uh, but there was nothing like that in biology in general and specifically in neuroscience. And so we started an organization called Backyard Brains. And what we try to do is take graduate level research equipment uh, that allows you to record the brain and make it available for kids uh, from kind of fifth grade on up in order to sort of, sort of change how we're uh, handling neuroscience in, in for the future to kind of create neuroscientists for the next generation. So uh, I'm going to do some experiments today showing this kind of DIY technology that we've created. Uh, and I'm going to be introducing a, a concept you might not be familiar with called mental chronography. So from the name mental, from the brain, and chronography, meaning, you know, the time. And we're going to be able to clock the inner workings of the brain to be able to understand how mental processes are working. And to do this, I'm going to introduce uh, this person to you guys. You guys may be familiar with him. He is uh, Rene Descartes, an early 17th century philosopher. Uh, but I'm not going to be talking about the, that Descartes. I'm going to be talking about a, a different one. And we're going to start with a young boy. Uh, so Descartes in France, when he was young, he went to the Royal French Gardens. And the French king was a bit of a, a prankster. And he would put these kind of lifelike mannequins hidden in the bushes. And when people would walk by, they would sort of pop up and sort of scare them. And, and then, so this happened to Rene. And he was wondering, hey, how does this work? And he looked at it, it was a hydraulic system. There was these, uh, like these water pipes that were going underneath that when you stepped on it, would cause almost lifelike action in these mannequins, right? And so that, that stuck with him, we think, and that went on uh, throughout his life. And so if you follow his work, you know that he's also very keen about uh, understanding how the brain works. He was the father of vivisection. So he uh, was trying to take apart animals and understand how do these things that are inside of our body give rise to behaviors. And so if you, if you read about it, you'll see a whole bunch of discussions about, you know, how, how does the nervous system possibly work. And when he starts thinking about you know, this, this experience he had as a child, he gets this idea of stimulus response. And so this is from a, uh, a figure that he has in the 1641 publication. For some reason, a baby is sticking his hand into a fire. Uh, but what he's asking is, is, how does this baby, like, how does it uh, bring his hand back, right? And so he has a, a couple of hypotheses. And, and, and one of them is that there could be, like, a thread that's coming from our body up to our brain where it interacts with consciousness. You couldn't escape that. Uh, and then it would come back down and sort of complete the circuit and allow that muscle to, to retract. And so we are going to test that hypothesis today using our DIY gear. And so I'm going to ask uh, Zach to come on, on stage. So I've pre-selected a few volunteers just because we have a, uh, let's see, I'll set it up over here. Uh, we're on a bit of a time constraint now. So I'm going to go ahead and, whoopsies. All right, nothing's destroyed. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook up some electrodes to, to Zach, because what I want to do is I want to be able to measure the output from Zach's brain out down to his body, sort of this thread that we're seeing in the, in the figure behind me. And so to do that, I'm going to put some electrodes, and these have a little bit of salt water on them that allow the electricity to flow from his body into the electrodes, and I'm going to stick the electrodes onto his muscle right here, and I'm not going to stick Zach's foot in fire. Uh, instead... You might be familiar with the patellar reflex when you went to the doctor's office. Uh, so this is another reflex arc that has a very similar circuitry. And I'm going to be able to measure that very, very carefully today. So I'm going to plug you in. This is our, our spiker box here. So Zach, when you're ready, I want you to go ahead and, and kick your leg out. Okay, so you guys can see this. And you can hear it. This is the output of his motor cortex sending a command down to his leg. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to start doing some experiments. And the first experiment I'm going to do is, you might be familiar with this from your doctor's office. This is a little uh, reflex hammer. 
but we've, we've glued an accelerometer in there so you can actually see right here when I move the hammer. So we're going to be able to see the exact moment at which I hit his knee. And we're going to measure how long it takes for the brain to respond back to when, this, when I hit his leg. So Zach, if you will, just I want you to kind of close your eyes and just relax. I'm going to give you a whack. A little bit better that way. I'm not really seeing anything right now, so I'm going to hit it one more time. All right, now we've got something. So now what I want to do is I want to zoom in. We're going to capture that activity. Click here. Let me hit it one more time to make sure I have it. Oh, we've got it. Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to zoom in now. And so that's where his leg reacted. So I'm going to measure this time right here. And it's about eh, 30 milliseconds between when I hit his knee and when his leg reacted. So now, in theory, what I'm going to do uh, is hit your other knee. And so if, if the distance to the brain is the same between both knees, it should be the same, right? Uh, so we're going to test that out. So, Zach, close your eyes. And when you feel me hitting your leg now, I want you to kick that leg out, okay? Okay, so let's figure out where his, ah, so there's a much, much longer delay between his right leg and his left leg. And the question is, why is that? And so if we can go to the slide for a second, I'll show you. There's actually some circuitry involved. And so he was correct. Rene Descartes was correct. There is a circuit, a reflex arc inside of our bodies. He just didn't know where it was. Uh, he didn't have quite the, the tools for this. And so it turns out that the reflex arc is in his spinal cord. So what we're seeing is a, is a quick round trip between the leg and back instead of going back up to the brain. And so here we can see some neuroanatomy being discovered just by recording from the, from the leg. So I'm going to give a round of applause for Zach. I'm going to have one more person come out. And so Valerie, if you will, so we have one more volunteer. And what we're going to do now is, uh, I mentioned before, we're going, to me we're going to measure the internal workings of the brain using uh, this, techni this technique. All right, so Valerie, I want you to roll, you can have, come over here. I want you to roll up your sleeve for science. And now I'm going to place some electrodes on your arm. It does, yes. Okay, so now we're going to go back to this idea of mental chronography, and we're going to measure how long it takes you to do a very, very simple task. And so your task is going to be, when you see a light come on, I want you to give me a response. And I'm going to set it up first. Yeah, you can have a seat. I like this bar stool on the stage idea. All right. So hook you up here and here and here. Okay. So let me reset this guy now and get it off this node. Okay, so when you're ready, I want you to go ahead and uh, give me a squeeze like this. Like, okay, that's perfect. So that's the output of her motor cortex right now. We've, we've been established that so far. So just relax. So that's going to be your answer, okay? The question it is, is going to be, when you see this light come on right here, let me turn this a little bit, I want you to move your, move your hand as soon as you see the light, okay? I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to do it. And when, and, and when the light comes on, we're going to see a marker on the screen. So just you relax and just when you see that light come on, Okay, so, you get, so that's one second. That time bar right there is one second long. Let me make it a little bit bigger. And so we can measure the amount of time it's going to take her to do this. Okay. Ooh, that was a misfire. Oh, okay. I didn't even look. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As a control, the subject was not looking. Okay, all right, so, <laughs> all right, so here we go. All right, that's, that's, this is about typical. It takes about 150 milliseconds for your brain to recognize that a light comes on and do a response, this is reaction time. So now the task is to be 100% the same. When the red light comes on, you are going to move your arm. But now I'm going to put a distractor. Oh. There's going to be a different color light, right? And so now what should happen with the reaction timer? It should get bigger. Why? Because we're doing some mental processing. She's determining if it's a red or green light. And then what we can do now, so I'm going to do this a few times. Okay. Yeah, so if we actually do this and measure it, you're going to see there's a shift in the, in the reaction time for about 20 to 30 milliseconds. And so if you take the reaction time from the first task, which you're just looking for the light to come on, and you subtract it from the second reaction time, which is waiting between the two lights, we can now determine how long does it take to recognize a color. 
And then we can divide that three by the, how long it takes for a neuron to fire. We can start to piece apart how does the mental process inside the brain works at a neuron level, which is kind of fascinating. So with that, I'm going to end it. I'm going to tell you that uh, we will be set up in the TEDx labs uh, in, the, in the ballroom. And we'd like for you guys to come down and check it out. And we're going to be doing some more scientific experiments there. So thank you very much for your time. And help us bring on the neural revolution. <laughs> Cheers.